Steph Curry after two rounds of the LMA Classic. Certainly uh, not the day you hope to have, but uh, maybe a few opening comments on just the experience over the last two rounds. Uh, as always, it's an amazing opportunity and experience to be out here um, to uh, test my, my game in the ultimate pressure and stressful situations. And, uh, today was interesting all the way around. Uh, I knew sort of what I had to shoot. Played the first and hold was okay, and then the wheels fall, fell off on the third hole. Um, couldn't hit a driver to save my life today, so that's how golf goes. One day you have it, or at least in the amateur world. One day you have it, one day you completely lose it and have no idea what you're doing over top of the ball. But um, just try to just have as much fun down the stretch as possible, try to hit some good shots. And uh, only thing about yesterday, you talked about it. So you attributed your rough start yesterday to nerves. What do you kind of attribute to your rough start today? I have no idea. Um, we were on the third tee box for a little bit, and usually there's a little flow to it. And on that particular hole, we were waiting for a little bit, and I just did not have the right swing after the little hiatus, or I should say two swings, uh, sailing two out of bounds. And uh, from there, just nothing clicked, especially off the tee. And if you can't get off the tee in a professional tournament like this, then you're uh, fighting an uphill battle. So uh, that's kind of the whole theme of the day. Steph, on some level, how surprised were you? So you, you? There were a lot of predictions of this kind of round last year. And three times you defied that. Yeah, it was uh, a tough pill to swallow in the middle of it, for sure, because I had nothing but great experiences out here. Whether well, I hit good shots or not, I found a way to kind of work my way around the course and score. Uh, but when you have shots that are flying, there's no chance to stay even on the course. That's uh, that's where it gets a little confusing. But uh, that, again, that's what the game of golf is. It's one inch here, there, club phase opens, ball starts spraying, um, you're, you're lost. And so that's what happened to me, and it's really hard to. I would say in that moment, that experience was really hard to gather myself and try to just figure out how to work my way around. You know, with how wide my misses were, and I was missing both sides. How do you keep your head and stuff like when that's happening? Same way I do on the court when I'm not making shots. You just find something to focus on that you can do. Uh, for me, it was just trying to take each shot and just have, have fun with it and try to hit a good shot and not really get too down about the result if it wasn't what I was expecting. So um, the round kept my attention the whole way. You know, I was trying to just grind and you know, obviously made two birdies on the back and uh, burned the edge on, I think, two more. Um, but that was amongst a whole lot of big numbers. I think the only number I didn't get today was a double digit number and, and an eight. So I got every other number covered. You didn't hear much skepticism coming in this year because you played pretty well last year. Do you think this round will cause some people to question again the sponsor exemption? And how much do you want to come back next year? Uh, I mean, probably if you're looking for something to critique or say, I told you so. I had three solid rounds and then I finally blew up. So if that's what the conversation is out of this, I think you're missing the point around one, the appreciation for how hard it is to play on this tour how you know as a professional these guys are just so good and uh, you know the, I got it I think a little bit exposed about how if you don't have you know the right flow for me and how much I play and um, you know my experience in the game is it's hard to kind of self-correct uh, these guys can figure it out and that's why you know a guy like Cameron Champ who really didn't have much going on today scrambled and found a way to make the cut and uh, and Martin's working on stuff to come back next week in Portland and having a good round and a good tournament and why he's got his tour card. So for me particularly, it just I'm really proud of the first three rounds that I've had in this tournament and uh, I will have a short memory on this if I come back next year. Um, but it's all about continuing to raise awareness for the guys out here on the web.com, uh, the game of golf in general, and, and uh, take advantage of that opportunity. You might not have been able to correct it today, but when you are going right off the tee as you did off it today, what's usually the cause? What's usually the problem for you? Uh, if I knew the answer to that question, <laughs> I probably would uh, be in a better mood right now. <laughs> but uh, probably just you know, getting, the, getting the club a little into inside and getting quick with it and start spraying it. 
where uh, I start lifting up uh, on my follow through, which uh, makes the ball go right too. So those are two things that some guys who have watched my swing have kind of pointed out as something I could work on and be aware of. But in the moment, it's hard to feel that uh, in pressure situation. What was your overall impression of uh, the length of Cameron Chandler? It's, it's unbelievable. I mean, you see where he, the lines he's taking off the tee and the clubs he's hitting coming in the greens and, and just the overall the sound of the, the club coming off his face, off the club head, is pretty crazy. So uh, I think I saw some other web.com guys, you know, towards the end of our round sneak out and watch him on think 17 and 18. So everybody's in awe of, you know, just the raw athlete he is and how far he can hit the ball for sure. The next, uh, next turn, not turn, but the next thing that you're going to do golf wise is Clay's. Um, okay. How do you? Just about the same as Clay. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, are you going to make a concerted effort to just like kill everyone on that on that one? <laughs> yeah. Cause, cause yeah. Usually when I have a bad game in the court, I come back the next game and figure it out. So yeah, whoever, whoever's in that, in that uh, foundation or whoever the charity tournament whoever's in my group should be feeling pretty good about our chances. <laughs> Is that kind of difficult to not sure. have a chance to come? I mean, not like you can come back tomorrow and try to make a man. Tournament wise, you got to wait. Oh yeah, but uh, I mean, yeah, this isn't my my day job, and it, obviously you know, I gave it everything I had and had fun with it. So I'll probably be uh, thinking about it as I drive home and later tonight. But at the end of the day, I had an amazing opportunity to play with these pros and gave it my all. And, oh, and uh, appreciate that. And um, yeah, that's that's kind of why I came out here. How much golf were you playing leading up to this tournament? How much did you get to practice and play? Uh, I played in a title tournament, but I played probably there were not as much as um, as I would want to. Just knowing uh, my wife had a third baby uh, very recently and and whatnot. So um, maybe one of these days I won't have a baby in the summer. I don't know what the schedule is between the finals and uh, and this tournament that I can get a game plan of how I'm gonna get my game game and tip top shape, you know, the best that I can play. Uh, and see if I can put two solid rounds in the blue notes. You tempted not to ask your parents not to come follow you around? That was the first time they were here, right? No, I usually beat my dad on the course. I actually <laughs> invited him and I was uh, making sure he was there because I usually bring the best out of me, but uh, a little different situation with him outside the ropes for sure. Um, but it was uh, it was fun to see him walk out here. My mom was talking about how hot it was, but it was good. Was there any point where you were I mean, you're usually very poised, and you were today even, but was there any point where you really, that frustration sort of reached? Walking down the third hole when I knew what two bad swings meant in terms of me trying to chase the cut. So, that's a t especially that early in the round, that's tough. Uh, it's a tough feeling. I felt so good on the back nine yesterday. Thought I had, you know, played the first holes, hit some good shots, just missed a tough putt on the second hole for a bogey, and then from there, uh, thought I still had a chance to kind of, you know, rally and, Hit two out of bounds, walking down that fairway, you're seeing all the, the the fans looking, don't see a ball, and my third tee shot's on the other side of the, of the fairway. Um, it, was a, it was a long walk, that 600-yard hole, for sure. How would you rate Johnny's performance? Uh, Johnny was amazing. Uh, if I, I can't blame any of my performance today on the caddy. Yesterday, he, uh, he came through showing today, so if I, if I come back out here, he'll probably be back on the bag. Do you, sure. do you expect to come back next year? Expect to play? I don't know. Just obviously a lot of conversation, a lot of time before that. But uh, uh, this opportunity was amazing, and it was a uh, it was a week or, or two days being around. You know, the guys that you know, I was walking down the range, everybody was just so welcoming and you know giving me praise about how I played yesterday and thanking me for coming out and the whole deal. So just the reception you get out here from the from the, the professionals, the fans, the whole Bay Area that shows up, um, it's, it's amazing. And uh, yeah, if the calendar's open, hopefully I can get back out here for sure. And you know, when it comes to my participation this year, um, I was made aware of uh, Scott Harrington, who uh, is a professional on Web.com tour, uh, that has taken a, a leave to be with his wife who's battling cancer. And um, this was an opportunity for me. Uh, obviously there's no words to, uh, I can't put into words, you know, the thoughts and, and feelings around, you know, the, what their family's going through and whatnot. 
Um, but as I come out here and play with these professionals, it's about raising their notoriety in terms of the game of golf. Uh, and a guy, Scott Harrington, who's not out here right now, uh, I had a chance to talk to him on the phone this morning um, and let him know um, as part of my participation in, in the tournament this year in the LMA Classic that I was going to donate 25000 to uh, his the, the GoFundMe page that's there to support his family as his wife is battling. Um, the LMA uh, tournament is donating uh, 15000 as well. And uh, we encourage anybody who's a fan of the game and um, who you know, appreciates what these guys do every day to go to his GoFundMe page as well, um, Scott and Jennifer Harrington, um, and donate what you can to help them get through this tough time. So uh, it, was a, it was a good conversation this morning I had with him just to let him know, you know obviously everybody out here on the tour and everybody I've talked to that knows him uh, says so many great things about him and his family and are uh, thinking about him during a tough time right now. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, sir.